What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. Now, look, y'all. All of y'all know that I grew up in Chicago, Illinois, born and raised. Been here all my life outside of the years that I went to college, and I'm proud of being in Chicago. Extremely proud. Y'all hear me talk about it every video. But, like, some of the most genuine people that I ever met in my life were the people that I met when I was going to school down south, when I was in the south, when I was in Mississippi, and I was in Arkansas. I spent four years of college in Mississippi when I was getting my uh, bachelor's degree, and then I spent two years of college in Arkansas when I was getting my master's degree. And the individuals that I encountered in the South were some of the most genuine people ever, ever, and they made a huge, huge impact on my life, and I'm never going to forget them, man. Like, I made friends in the South that are still with me to this day. I mean, I've been in, I've been in their weddings. They've been to come visit visit me on several occasions. I mean, anytime I had my, my, excuse me, my little sister went to school down south and they looked out for her down there, it was just like a, it was a different type of love, man. I remember being a kid coming fresh out of the shy at 18 years old. When I, was, when, when I went to school, my whole thing was that, like, I didn't have a vehicle out there. And I'm like, man, how am I going to get back and forth to these stores like Walmart and so on and so forth, right? I'm telling y'all, when I met friends down there, they made sure I had a ride everywhere I needed to go, all the time. It didn't matter what it was, like, if I needed to go to the store and it was late, they'd give me a ride because they knew I needed it, you know what I mean? Like, they would come through whenever necessary, you know what I mean? And me being from Chicago, I know being here, there are certain things people just not going to do for you. They're not going to do it or they're not going to try to figure it out. They'll lie and say, I'm going to try to help, I'm going to try to figure it out for you, but they not. You know what I mean? Like, I remember times when I had to go out of town, and I had to go to the airport, which was two hours away from campus. I was in Itzabina, Mississippi, Jackson, two hours away, and I needed to get to the airport. But I'm telling y'all, I had no hard, I didn't have a hard problem, problem at all getting a ride to the airport. People all, like, all my friends all the time found time to take me to the airport. Now, of course, I was offering, I was giving them gas money, of course, to do that. But yet still, I knew in Chicago, it's people I could offer gas money to that's never going to take me two hours away. It's over with, and I can chalk it up. I, you can take the L out of love. It was over with. It was over with, and I knew that. You know what I mean? But in Mississippi, it was just a whole different type of vibe, man. Um, there were times where I would be hungry. Me and my boy Melvin, we both from Chicago. We would be hungry in our dorm rooms. It's late. The cafeteria has closed at like 7 o'clock. Y'all know HBCU cafeteria is closed early. And I would call my boy Derek. Derek would get up in the middle of the night and take us to go get some McDonald's or some Wendy's or something to get us to, to get us some food to eat. He could be laying down, sleep, watching TV, watching a movie or whatever. He could be out with his lady or whatever. He would always make get up and if we was hungry, he would make sure we would eat. Excuse me, I'm a little under the weather, but... He had no problem doing that, you know what I mean? It wasn't no dragging his feet, like, oh, my God, none of that. And I knew it was dudes in the shy that would have that would have responded to me like that. Some dudes I probably, you know, was going to school with for a long time, and they would drag their feet trying to do They wouldn't They wouldn't want to do that for me at all. Like, I had other, my other homeboy, Dorian. I need a ride somewhere. He go take us to the, go take us to the store. I mean... Any type, and if he didn't, if he couldn't take me to to go somewhere that I needed to go, he'll find somebody to take me where I needed to go. You know what I mean? Like people just always giving that extra, extending extending the friendship as best as possible. You know what I mean? Like they extending a helping hand when necessary, when needed. And it was times I didn't even I didn't have to ask for nothing. If they saw me needing something. And sometimes I can be prideful, I won't say nothing, but if they saw that I needed it, they would ask me, you know what I mean? Or they would do it for me. You know what I mean? It's people in, being here in the, at the crib, it's people that know you in a bad situation and, and have the, they're cap more than capable, excuse me, more than capable of helping you, but they won't help you at all until you ask. You gotta ask. Like, and I always wonder, like, why when you see me, I'm the type of person, if I see my friends struggling and I can help them, I'm not gonna ask if they need help. I'm not going to try to break their pride as a man, as a person. Oh, I'm going to wait till he asks me. No, I see you need help. I'm going to help out as best as possible. I'm going to try to do what I can to alleviate them uh, the stress, the stresses of this situation. And in Mississippi, people was doing that. Like, my friends that I met, they were those type of people. 
and I'm never going to forget them. You know what I mean? When my little sister went to school, I was gone back in the shop. My little sister was down in, in Mississippi. And when I tell you they looked out for her, when she needed a ride to the, go to the train station, she had a ride. When she needed a ride to go to the store, she had a ride all the time. Any any time that she need that would need something, I would always be able to reach out to somebody and that can help and get to her and help her. Or, you know what I mean, reach out to somebody. If they couldn't do it, they can find somebody else to do it. And they will follow through all the time. And it was like, man, I felt like they embraced me like a native son out there. Native son, like I was from, like... They acted like I was from the Delta, from it had been in Mississippi, and I'm way 10 hours away. You know what I mean? And it was like the love was just so genuine, and it's still genuine to this day, man. Like, I promise y'all, and I'm not trying to down my city when I'm talking about it. I'm talking about what people in the South did for me compared to what some people in the Shy would do. But it's just facts, man. It's facts. I mean, people from the Shy can tell you. It's people that you need to ride somewhere, and they could be going in the same exact direction, right? And... They either want gas money or they acting like they're having a hard time. They don't want to take you there or whatever. Like, you know, they're acting like it's a huge deal, a huge task to do this. And they got to go right past that place uh, on their on, on they route to wherever they're going. A Mississippi person know you need a ride somewhere and they going in the same direction. It's a no-brainer to them. You know what I mean? For the most part. Like, I'm not, I'm not speaking for all Mississippi people. But I'm saying the southern hospitality that I experienced, uh, it, man... Man, like, I'm never going to forget it. Same thing when I went to Arkansas. When I went to Arkansas, man, like, my new brothers and, and, and the people that I met out there, like, they was some of the most, to this day, I always speak highly of them because they're some of the most genuine people I ever met in my life. Like, one time I would get a shut off their back to somebody, that's really how they get out. You know what I mean? I ain't never, when I went to Arkansas, when I went to go kick it at the school, None of, I never had to get a hotel ever in my life. Like my new brothers are, like the, and my friends out there I always made sure I had somewhere to stay. All the time. All the time. Like I never had to worry about, you know, oh my God, if I, I don't know, I got to find a hotel. They, they wouldn't even want me to do that. Unless I really, really wanted to myself. They were like, look, you can stay with one of us. You know what I mean? So we want us to come get you from the airport or whatever. Like this, this is how they get out, man. And um, that type of love. That's something that's genuine, man. I, I remember when I first went to the South, I didn't have it in me to come into a room and speak to people. Yeah, I didn't have it in me to, like, you know, act like just go into the room, just be super hospitable. Hey, how y'all doing? You know, I, I didn't do that because in Chicago, we just didn't do that. You know, the older generation does it, but the younger generation don't come into a room and speak to everybody and ask them how they doing, how they day going and all. We don't do that in Chicago. But when I went down there, I saw them doing it, and I picked up that habit. And now, to this day, that's something that I do. You know, I carry that with me all the time. Because that's what that's what that's how the atmosphere was in the South. That's how it was when I was in Mississippi, when I was in Arkansas. People come in and ask you how you doing. They speak to you. They had no problem smiling at you. You know what I mean? Like, the, like I really had to get over her. Uh, it was like a hurdle I had to climb. Because in Chicago, I'm not used to, like, especially guys being friendly with me. I feel like you you might be on something with me. Like, what you trying to do? You trying me or you trying to, like, plot on me or whatever? Like, out here, this, I, you get, I really was on defense out here a lot. I was super defensive. I'm always worrying about, hold on, is this person trying to trick me? What they on with me? You know what I mean? Trying to figure out what their intentions are. And I'm still like that with any and everybody. But in the South, dudes had no problems being friendly with you. Man, what's up, man? You know, my name is such and such. What's going on, man? Nice to meet you, man. Hey, glad... Glad to have you out here. They were embracing, like I'm telling you, man. They could, and maybe it's because they felt they knew I was somewhere completely different from where I grew up. I was way out of my element, but they were confident in who they were to be as a man and say, you know what, what's up, bro, and, and still greet you with a smile and not feel like, oh my God, I gotta be super, super tough, 24/7. You know what I mean? Out here. Dude's always like mugging, and I mean, it's like you be in the hood. You like, man, it's my people. Like you out here with your people, and they mugging you out here. Like you like, fam. Like I ain't, I ain't know nothing with you. I ain't did nothing to you. I ain't trying to encroach on you or your homies or your family. What you looking at me foul, foul for? But in the south, you know, like the brothers down there was just like showing love. All like majority of the time, showing love. Had no problem complimenting you on something like. No problem. Hey, man, you, man, that's clean, man, that's clean. And here, I was finding a lot of dudes that I was getting, like, outside of my core friends, dudes trying to hate on you or trying to snake you, snake you in any best, in, in, in any way possible or so on and so forth. And the homies that I had, 
in the South, Mississippi and Arkansas, they, they wasn't like that at all. At all, man. They wasn't in competition with me. Like here, you got dudes always in competition with you. They call you, call you, um, they call you, they call you, excuse me, they call themselves your friend, right? They'll say, I'm your friend, I'm your homie or whatever. Be in competition with you all the time. Want to outdo you in every single thing. And it's like, what the hell? I don't live like I don't live like that. Even my homies that's from here, I don't got friends that's in competition with me. But a lot of dudes in the shy, they always trying to be the leader of the pack. Always trying to act like you know they want to be the the, the the leader of the group and all this and all of that. Like me and my homies in, in Mississippi and Arkansas, they I, we ain't operate like that. I ain't, they never operated like that with me. They never was in competition with me or nothing. Anytime I had something going on, they came to support me. When I was running for Mr. Mississippi Valley State University, they came to the function. When I got crowned, they was in the crowd, cheering for me, supporting me all the way through and through. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it was always like that. All the time. They found, when I was in Arkansas, my homies found out I was taking my comprehensive exams to get out of the university, to test out of the program and graduate. They sent me all type of encouraging words of encouragement to let the same day that I was taking this test, right? They sent me all types of words of encouragement and everything. And I will never forget that because that was going through a time in my life where I was really like, like it was a stressful time trying to pass this test as best as possible, trying to get out of this program, right? All while also being a member, becoming a member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. So it was a real like critical time for me. And my, my, my family out there in Arkansas, man, I promise y'all, they sent me all type of words of encouragement, all type of like, and people... From my line brothers to the friends that I met, being in the program, they were just sending me nothing but showing me nothing but love, and that was something that I was like, man, that is real. That is real to send me. Who like people I sent like you know encouraging texts the morning of the test. I had people that I knew for a long time that never did that. You know what I mean? They came from the same city I'm from and all that. Nope, that my homies they do that. You know what I'm saying? My homies that I got not that's that I got from Chicago that I've been with for the long for the longest or whatever. But like. Yeah, like it, when I, I'm telling y'all, man, when I went to the South, it was just like a different type of love, man, out there. It was just like all good. And it was a lot of positivity. A lot of positivity, man. Um, To this day, when I go down there, I'm telling y'all, man, it's always, I'm always having a good time. I'm always, I'm always finding somebody I went to, like I really interacted with down there. And it's always nothing but love all the time. If they can do something for you, you know what I mean? And they can, they, they can they can do it. They can help you. They're gonna do it. They're gonna do it, man. And um, it's not gonna be a problem for them. And um, that's what I really miss most about being in the South, man. The people were some great. It's, are still some great people. Great people, man. I mean, they knew I was way out of my element. I mean, inviting me home. You know what I mean? They know I ain't. I'm not around my mama to get no cook home good. Some good. Uh, home cooking from my mama. They, I, right, mama, come to my house for the weekend, man. You, my mama cook for you, man. My mama uh, make some food for you. My mama, like for real. As a matter of fact, um, the young lady that was Miss Valley with me, Brianka. I love, I love Brianka for real, cause she, like, she's a really great friend. When I was in Arkansas, she came out there too, a year after me. Her mother, I, and they knew I like tuna and stuff. Her mother, I went to go get the stuff. Her mama said, I'll make the tuna for you. I went and got it. My mama made me tuna, made me food, and all of that, man. It was just like, man, so much love, man. I had people, I had a lot of people out there that was like my second mom, for real. When I was in, when I was in school in, in Mississippi, my department chair, Miss Wanda Young, right, and Miss Barbara Gosa, Mr. Darwin Cannon, all these like, they knew I was out of my, they knew I was way out of my element. But I'm telling y'all, man, all the time, showing me love and support. When I graduated. Like, Miss Young gave me, like, money in a card and all that telling me how proud she was of me. How she, like, like, for real, how she was proud to watch me grow from a young boy. I was 18 years old out there, bald face. Like, I only got a little bit of facial hair now. You know what I mean? So you can imagine when I first got out there, I was bald face. For sure, like a little, little boy, a young boy. And I became a man out there. And, I mean, like, my boy Roshan Bailey giving me a watch when I graduated. Gave me and Melvin watches. Uh, Miss Young gave my boy Melvin some money in a car too. Like these were people that had our best interests at heart. Interests at heart. They knew what I wanted to do with my career path. Always looking out for me. Like always giving me, telling me of all different type of opportunities. Just always 
showing love, man. Showing love. Like I told y'all, I got my article written on ES, uh, published on ESPN because the uh, the professor, Miss Shannon Bowden, was looking out for me and was like, "Listen, she knew I wanted to be a journalist. She knew I loved it." So she presented with presented me with this opportunity. Look, write the article. I'll submit it, and we'll see what happens. And it, it came through. You know what I mean? But they knew what I wanted to do, and it was helping me, man. It was some great people all the time. I remember um, Mr. Cannon, his wife, cooked cooked breakfast for me and my boy. Like me and my boy were we, you know, out of my my boy is from Atlanta. My boy Blake cooked breakfast for us and everything, and I appreciated that because again, I didn't have my mama around. I didn't have no, like, I didn't have, I was out there with no family for real. I had a great aunt in Vicksburg, but she didn't come visit. She was elderly, you know what I mean? She wasn't traveling, you know what I mean? And I wasn't out there on the weekends or nothing like that. So it was like, it meant a lot to have that support system in place. And um, just always knowing that no matter what, you had people in your corner. Look, I remember when I was riding a train home one time, and, and um, I was taking an Amtrak train in Greenwood. I was taking, um... Damn, the city of New Orleans train to go to go back to the Chicago. This one time, the train was super late. Like, I mean, two hours late. When I tell you Mr. Cannon and his wife, you know what I mean, down in, in, in Mississippi, they stayed with me the entire time. Now, they could have been like, oh, it's taking too long, Malcolm. We're going to let you sit here. We are, you know, wait at the train station. We just let us know when you get on the train. Just call us when you get on the train. And that's cool. They could have did that. They could have just left me at the train like, all right, man, it's taking too long. They stayed with me the entire time and made sure they saw me get on that train to go home. They made sure, like, they, they knew I was somebody's son. You know what I mean? And so they wanted to look out for me as best as possible. They watched me get on that. They stayed the whole time. And I was like, and I'm, again, I'm sick a little bit, man. Um, got sleeping under the air conditioner. Got me a little stuffed up. But anyway, man, like, they were looking out for me. Like, I never feel, I'm like, they really sat here the whole time. This train was two hours late and made sure I got on that train. And they told me, we were not leaving until you get on this train. And I was like, man, like, you know how many people, boy, I know people in Chicago have been like, hey, I am not going to take you too damn long. Bye, we gone. Just let me know you get on the train. We'll holler at you. No, they not like that. They didn't even want. They didn't, they didn't even want to accept gas money from me, even though I gave it to them. I sat it, I left it in the car, just left it in the car. They didn't want to accept it at all. It was turning me down. I left it in the car. You know what I mean? Just because they they were that type. They they were those type of people. That's who they were, and it was genuine. And I felt that love. And I'm like, damn. Like I ain't never. I mean, I ain't never really like being in here. This is a. This is a. This is a city of broad shoulders. This is a hard-nosed city. Everybody on edge here because of the environment and how we grew up here. You know, even though I was a, always a smiling kid, but like down there, man, people ain't got no problem smiling at you, saying hello, asking how you doing, asking can they just, whatever they can do to help, they always willing to do that. And um, that's why I got love, so much love for the South, and I ain't never let nobody rat on nobody down there that I like, that I know, talk about them, and I like, nah, I'm not doing that at all. Because I'm just, they, want some, them, they, they are some great people. Great people down there, man. And um, you appreciate the simple things in life. Being around people like that. like You know what I mean? Like They don't come from a big city like we come from. But I mean just, just full of life all the time. You're full of life, full of joy. And it's just like, man, just got beautiful souls. And that's the type of people you want to interact with. You know what I mean? Like, um, what, taking me to, to get haircuts. You know what I mean, like all, like all of that stuff. <laughs> I promise y'all, man. I'm just, I'm, re, I'm recalling everything that happened, and I'm like, man, like when I was in school, I was like, always somebody always came through in all these situations for me. Like, I, I remember like having to get a ride, um, to out of just a whole other town, try to get. I was Mr. Valley, and I wanted to get suited and booted. I'm trying to find stuff for these events. Man, it was no problem getting no rides to go to these places. They take me, oh man, we know we need to have you. I know we we like look, we know you need to be clean. We know you need to be presentable for real. So we're gonna make sure you good. Like it ain't no problem. Like all the time. When I was running, matter of fact, when I was running for Mr. Valley, I will never forget this. I always tell this story. I had to like do community service hours. And I had completed them, but somebody didn't enter them properly. And I was away at I was at Media Day at Ole Miss, University of Mississippi. 
um, the communication, the mass communication department had uh, taken a trip to old Mrs. Media Day. So we out there, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying the time and talking to all these different people. And um, they like, look, we don't have your hours. You're trying to run for Mr. Valley. We don't have your community service hours. It's not in. It's not listed. I'm like, hold on. I sent it over there. Like, what's going on? My boy Derek was on campus and made sure my stuff got submitted on time for me to become Mr. Mississippi Valley State University. Derek from Miss from Midnight Mississippi and uh, Bell's Only Mississippi, man. Like a true brother, a true brother. Like my man's looked out and like made sure my stuff got submitted for me to be Mr. Miss to, for me to be. Mr. Mississippi Valley State University. Like, all that, man, is like, you never, that type of love, that, like, that's thorough. That's thorough. Dudes in the shot, I knew a lot of dudes in the shot that was, unless you was my day one homie, for real, for real, they ain't extending that type of, like, love. Like, nah, they, nah, man. It's even some dudes that you probably could call your friend or whatever, like, they're trying to figure out a way around it. Or they don't, they don't want to do it, even though they ain't doing nothing but sitting in their room all day. Like, and I'm gone at Ole Miss for hours. I'm going to be away for a long time. And I can't submit this information because I'm not around to do it. I'm not on campus. My boy Derek got that job done, man. And it's like, that type of stuff right there is why I'm always going to never, I'm never going to forget the love, I was, the love I was shown in the South. I'm never going to forget it at all. Machiavelli Mills TV. Peace.